as we share with you again the end of the word that I create, tried to develop for you. I, I told my staff on Thursday and last Thursday and then on Tuesday night we had a meeting with some of my key leaders and I told them that the Lord had challenged me about even the presentation because I knew it wouldn't make people shout. God told me be obedient. I, I want you to do what our chair lady and, and the board has shared with us. Look, one gospel, one world, one gospel for one world. Can I ask you a question? Are the lives of the children of Africa less valuable than your children? Are the men and women of America are their lives more valuable than the kids in the DRC and the parents? When I went to one of the villages that used to have 20,000 people, there were like 10 adults between the ages of 20 and 40. The rest were all dead from HIV and not from being gay either. See, you messed up, Christian church. HIV is a, is a curse of God on the gay population. You a fool. You, you, are, you, you are ignorant. You lack knowledge. 90% of all people with HIV are not homosexual. So you didn't know that, did you? Because you live in this silly American world that skewed your vision. But the gospel is for one world. The good news is not truncated by your geographic location or the melanin in your skin or lack thereof. The gospel is the death and the burial and resurrection of Christ from the grave for every person who ever been born. Give him praise about that. If I, if I would preach a sermon, I, I would call it what I told you earlier. I, 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 would, I would talk about we are called to the lost and the least. The, the, the traditional apostolic church will tell you they love souls. But sometimes we don't do a good job with lives. I can remember growing up in this church and I told the story to, to our saints when Bishop Holly was my pastor and I was about 18 years old and I told the saints I wanted to be a doctor and they told me clearly, oh no, oh no, you can't be a doctor. We don't believe in doctors. We believe in Jesus. Bishop Holly was a man of great vision. It was, I think, less than a month later, he said to me one day, he said, you're depressed. I said, no, I'm, he said, no, you're depressed. What's wrong with you? And I shared with him what I had shared with the saints. I said, well, I did tell the saints I want to be a doctor. And he said, what they tell you? He said, they told me I can't be a doctor. We don't believe in doctors. We believe in Jesus. He said, son, those folk who told you that, those are good people. And they did wrong. Boy, stay in school. God's going to use you in an unusual way. We need to stop trying to fit people into your little hole and your little square. You don't know what God's call is on somebody's life. And so unless you are anointed for real and not a shirk and a jerk. You may be in the midst of trying to derail something God is doing. Suppose I had listened to those people and then they have a visionary pastor who told me, you stay in school, I'll pray for you. God's going to use you. I didn't see this, but he saw it. Look, look, you've got to understand that the church is not going to be the church that you want it to be. It would be out of order. It must be the church that Jesus wants it to be. He died for the church, not us. So the gospel message does not change but the way it's presented and the modality of presentation must change uh, you just had us do a selfie suppose you were in church 20 years ago and told somebody to do a selfie they go what's wrong with her first of all what is a selfie <laughs> half of them are confused you said this and you're like hashtag what's that that oh that's the little thing on on the typewriter what's a typewriter 
many of y'all got a typewriter now? You ain't got no typewriter now. I learned to type on a typewriter. My kids don't know what a typewriter is. They ain't never saw a typewriter. I showed them a, I showed them a, t- a telephone with a dial on it. They said, what is that? Hello? Things change. The gospel remains the same. But to be effective, the modality must change. And so in the word of God, that's why I quoted what I quoted. Let me quote it to you very quickly. Because here, here is the backbone of, of the message. Paul says, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, right? He says in Romans 1, it is the power of God unto salvation, right? The gospel is, in fact, the power of God that leads to salvation. Salvation is deliverance. Salvation is to bring you back to what God wants you to be originally, you do know that in the garden there was no sin in the garden of Eden Adam was not made to die hello y'all he was not made to get sick but when sin entered corruption entered too all the gospel is is a reversal of the say reverse the curse when you preach the gospel when people receive the gospel in any location in the world it will reverse the curse the curse that was put on them will be eradicated and reversed somebody give God praise so when the curse is reversed should you not expect to be in better health Oh, let me call my second scripture. The thief only comes, all he is is a thief. The devil is a slew footed thief. He wants you broke, ignorant, and poor, and sick. That's why I quoted Matthew 9. Jesus went about all the cities, uh, uh, it, the cities and the synagogue, preaching the gospel, teaching, and healing every sickness and every disease. He came to demonstrate that the true gospel turned everything around. Hello, y'all. So when you get saved and shown up saved, not just your spirit is saved. Your body will get saved. Oh, you don't want to hear this. Bishop Holly told us if you live for God, you won't get old quick. Because you can't live like a barnyard chicken and expect to be vital when you get older. That's why I don't look my age and I can outlast any of y'all in Jesus' name. I ain't boasting. I'm telling you this. God is on my side. He came to give me life, physical life, spiritual life, emotional life, relational life, financial life, all life, life life this life is not just speaking in tongues and I believe in that but that's only a part of it when the Lord delivers you your finances are to get delivered too when the Lord hallelujah he will deliver you from your emotional inadequacies Jesus if you oh my God if you come to a real Holy Ghost filled church with real mature leaders and you're here for five years everything about you ought to change your friend said what happened to you you look better you talk better you walk better you act better that's the gospel stop preaching a narrow gospel your kids are not to be doing hair. They are to own the salon. They, look, look. Can I talk for real? Can I really talk for real? So when the guys come to the, to the hospital now and they say, well, we need somebody to do X, Y, Z. They say, ask him. And they look and they see this black guy. Say, what, who is he? No, I used to be an intern. I used to be a resident. I'm a senior attending physician. I was the director of the comprehensive hemoglobin thalassemia since South Division at Northwestern for 20 years. I built the program by the power of God. And they know it too. That's why I'm still there. Not on call. Hallelujah. Because the gospel will deliver you. The gospel will make your enemies be at peace with you. The gospel will make folks that don't like you help you. And I gotta quit because yeah, hallelujah. 
not this traditional stuff that's outdated, outmoded, and ineffective and does not work. If it worked, I would go with it, but it don't work. Don't have your tie on right. That don't work. You can't come in here sloppy, but you ain't got to have a suit and tie to get the Holy Ghost. Come as you are. Come down, come boldly to the throne called grace. And you will find mercy and grace to help in the time of need. When we surmise to go to the third world countries, do not take your American culture to them. Take the gospel to them. Take Take them something that will break the back of every demon that will destroy every curse in the name the gospel I had all my little notes about how many people die every day I don't even want to read them because today this is not an exaggeration today Yolanda 15,000 children died in this world needlessly they, 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 they died they could have been they could have been John they could have could have been Addison they could have been Lillian they could have been one of my grandchildren they died why did they die because this world has a system of poverty that keeps children vulnerable and I will tell you right now every society including this one is going to be judged on the way you treat your children you're most vulnerable if you don't take care of them you can't love anybody if you show me how you devour your children I'll tell you what kind of person you are because when you don't love kids that's why the Lord took children and put them in the midst and said look at that he said, they said, he's too busy. Suffer the little children to come unto me and forbid them not. Why? For of such is the kingdom. The kingdom of God is characterized by the childlike faith of innocent children. And we let them die. We wouldn't let it happen in America. We wouldn't let 15,000 kids die every day. There'd be a, 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 there'd be a revolt you have never seen before. It wouldn't happen in Europe. It can happen in India because they don't care about brown folk. It can happen in Africa because we don't care. And we in the church are sitting on our cushion pews and we don't care either. Because if you don't give toward their help, then you don't care. There's a reason you have what you have. I got to close. 20 years ago, we went to, to Africa for the first time. I knew all about HIV AIDS. I was a hematologist. I took care of children. I ran the hemophilia program with others. And our kids started dying. We didn't know why they were dying. Then the next year we found out they're dying from something called HIV. We never heard of it. And then we had to tell parents that we know your child's infected, but we have no treatment for the children. And I diagnosed in that year about 20 kids had to tell their parents we cannot treat them. Can you imagine being their physician and can't do anything about them living and dying? It's happening today in the DRC, in the Congo, in Zimbabwe. It's happening there right now. It, it said, no, we got antiretroviral drugs. They cannot afford it. The drugs cheap cost a dollar a day and they make less than two dollars a day to live. But your kids go to McDonald's. So do mine. Spend money for all kind of stuff and forget about the poor. Let me quote my last scripture. I was hungry. I was hungry. You would not feed me. I was thirsty. You would not give me drink. I was naked. You would not clothe me. Lord, when were you hungry? And we did not feed you. When were you thirsty? And we didn't give you a cool drink of water. When were you homeless? And we didn't come see about you. He said, if you have not done it to the, say the least. We must be concerned about the lost and the least. You must help people who have no capacity to help you back. Hello. You must help those that may even curse you. When I worked with World Vision, we had a model. Our vision for every child. Life in all its fullness and our prayer for every heart the will to make it so 
See me later on. This country spends $450 billion a year on warfare. $450 billion. Take half of that. You can feed every child in Africa. Take half of it. But we don't have the will to do it because we devalue life. The PAW must do a better job. I applaud the PAW for being in 200 countries. But don't be in those countries. It's like having children, but you won't feed them. You boys, stop getting these girls pregnant. You can't take care of the kids. You ain't no baby daddy. You a scoundrel. And she's just deluded. I said, I can say whatever I want to say in this pulpit almost. And I'm tired of us. I'm tired of us. When you get those girls pregnant, you are only creating fodder for prisons and for low paying jobs and for violence and poverty. Don't you know the rope a dope of the devil? That's the devil at work. That's all it is. Your sperm ain't so such and much. I got sperm too. Not impressed by you. You are not macho. You you are you are my brother and you're ignorant. And they made you mandingo as if as if your only value is your sexual prowess. They make us entertainers and sexualized creatures to keep us low. But I've been delivered by the Holy Ghost. I ain't going back. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm the limb and not the bar. I'm above and not beneath. And I won't go back. I'm done. Give God praise.